So from M mode, we developed two-dimensional echocardiography. And I'll just give you a very brief uh, overview of it. But see, in, in actual figure, you're able to see the aortic valve, you're able to see the left ventricular cavity, you're able to see the LA, the right ventricular outflow tract. And if you look at it, this is exactly what you can see in, a, in an echo. And you can see the moving picture. So this was a revolution that happened. That from ECG, X-rays, and angiography, we also had something which could tell us what we should be thinking, what is the disease, and then do and go accordingly. Here is another picture of parasitic of parasitic long axis view. You can see the aortic valve here. You can see the aortic valve here, closed position. You can see the aortic valve open position, and you can see on echo in the opening. Uh, the opening position. So even though you are seeing a slice of the heart, you are able to perceive that, yes, we are able to diagnose conditions uh, by echocardiography. And this was a huge change. It was a change beyond belief. For example, here, this is a short axis view. And in the short axis view, you can see the contra contraction of the heart. You can make out what the ejection fraction is. And on the other side, you can see that just as in the real specimen, you can see the thickened uh, LV walls, you can see the anterior papillary muscle, you can see the papillary muscles here, you can see the right ventricle outflow tract. All these things are seen in real time. The beauty of echocardiography is real time. You can visualize the whole thing. So this is a short axis view. And the addition of color added a new dimension. You could now see the regurgitations. You can see the other structures very clearly. And I will give you an example. But just see, in this specimen, you can see the aortic valve and you can see the interatrial septum, exactly what you can see in real life. And you will, and I tell you that in real life, by the use of echocardiography, you can actually see things which were not even visualized previously. You can see the interatrial septum, you can see the, the tricuspid valve, you can see the aortic valve, and you can see the septal. So you can find out if the patient has ASD, if you can find out if the patient has a VSD. All these things are now possible just by the use of a 2.5 megahertz transducer. These are the apical views. You can see very clearly aorta, RA, RV, whatever you are seeing, the same things you can see, you can see in the apical four chamber view of a patient while the patient is comfortably lying. <coughs> you can see the LV cavity, you can see the mitral valve, you can see the left atrium, the right ventricle, the right atrium, and the inter ventricle septum. You can see the complete. Uh, walls of the, and in many views, all 17 segments can be visualized. So this then very briefly showed us that from the time when Leonardo da Vinci actually showed us what the structure of the heart is, now you can see it without any pain to the patient, any radiation hazard to the patient, left lateral position, transducer, and you can see all these things. Moving next. Sometimes we could see that, yes, the valve is leaking or the valve is stenosed, but we didn't know the, uh, the uh, gradients across those valves. There, Doppler echocardiography came into view. And here, I, again, I will take you to a brief history. It was Johann Christian Doppler from the University of, um, one of the universities in, um, uh, in, in Austria who, who defined the Doppler principle and the Doppler shift. And that became the basis of Doppler echocardiography. Look at this. We have put a sample volume on the mitral leaflets. You can see the blood flow from the LA to the LV. E wave, the A wave, I'm not going into the uh, scientific nuance of it right now, but this is one way by which you can actually find out whether the patient has any diastolic abnormalities or not. 
all the while we were concentrating on systolic abnormalities and now we can even talk very very correctly about those patients who have stiff, stiff ventricles or whose hearts are stiff and not and dust and there is abnormality of relaxation similarly here we can get the get the gradients across the tricuspid valve across the aortic valve across the mitral valve so not only can we diagnose these individual uh, stenosis or regurgitation but also in combination that the patient has severe ms but also has as you can diagnose i can tell you it used to be a very difficult job when we used to do cardiac cath and then and then define these things color doppler you can see very clearly you can see the left ventricle here you can see the enlarged left ventricle and you can see the uh, flow of blood <coughs> into the left atrium what is this this is regurgitation without putting any dye into the left ventricular cavity you are actually able to define mitral regurgitation and same thing you can do for tr and tr is important because you can actually define psp pressure so hemodynamics is another area by which you can tell your clinical card cardiologist that sir here is a patient whose psp is high inferior vena cava is dilated tricuspid annulus is wide probably has got a dilated cardiomyopathy so the benefits of echocardiography is totally non invasive of course there are now other nuances of echocardiography in which we put transesophageal and that cause that is invasive angiography but echocardiography but what we are talking now is a totally non invasive technique it has no radiation hazards you can use it in uh, in pregnant ladies as well it is easily available it can be done at the bedside assessment of cardiac morphology and hemodynamics that's very important hemodynamics in real life in real time is a is very important and you can see the results immediately so it's available it's not very expensive can be done from the er to the or 